via telephone from Charleston, John Doyle. He's a candidate for state senate. He's also lobbying uh, this year in uh, the Capitol as well. John, good morning, sir. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Morning. John, you are representing West Virginia Free, correct? And two other clients. Oh, who else are you with? Uh, West Virginia Citizens Action Group and West Virginia Clean and Beautiful. All right, let's talk about those three, can we? Sure. All right, let's uh, go through each one of those. West Virginia Free is, uh, from what I remember in interviewing those folks, they are a group that is pro-choice, correct? Correct, and also all everything related to women's health care. Everything related to women's health care. And the other two organizations, could you uh, tell us what those do? Yeah, West Virginia Citizens Action Group uh, is a pro-consumer organization. Uh, it, and it involves uh, any, anything uh, r- relating to the economy on the side of the consumer. And the third one? West Virginia Clean and Beautiful. Uh, up until about a month ago, it was Hardy County Clean and Beautiful. Uh, it's a group that formed uh, in response to uh, a, um, uh, an incident last summer in Hardy County where uh, the owner of, a, uh, 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 of one fumigation plant, which is in uh, wood fumigation plant, which is in Moorfield, uh, wanted to build another one uh, out in rural Hardy County near Baker. Uh, and uh, about 200 people showed up at a, a citizens' meeting protesting it uh, because it was going to go on a farm, and it's an area zoned uh, for agriculture. Uh, and uh, the, uh, 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 the West Virginia Farm Bureau had told them that, uh, that state law said that anything zoned agriculture, uh, anybody could put anything on it, even a factory. Uh, and these folks uh, took exception to that, and I agree with them. And there's now another bill in the legislature which would kind of make it uh, even easier uh, to put such a plant. Uh, and, and they're also concerned about uh, um, wind farms uh, that uh, encroach on uh, housing developments and, uh, and that sort of thing. So it's, uh, uh, they're pro-environment and also uh, pro-land use regulations. If we don't pay attention to zoning restrictions. There's no sense in having zoning, John. Uh, that is correct. Right? I mean, it's the part of the zoning thing that I don't get is how easily that the restrictions can be ignored or abused. It bothers the correct. living hell out of me. The interesting thing is that Hardy County's zoning plan, uh, they've had zoning since the late 1970s. Uh, and they th- their zoning plan is is intentionally protective of agriculture and anything that anybody would consider to be agriculture. But for some reason, uh, the um, owners of these uh, uh, poultry plants up there, uh, Pilgrim's Pride, are worried that at some point in the future, the Hardy County Planning Commission might come down on them, and the owner of this fumigation plant uh, was upset that uh, it turned out he couldn't put his fumigation factory in, on a farm. So uh, this is where we are. John, in regards to West Virginia Free, I want to bring up a poll I heard this morning on my drive in today. I believe it was a Quinnipiac poll, which showed President Biden leading uh, former President Trump, I think, 50 to 46 in a poll that was done. And he had uh, President Biden. Uh, who had been trailing in a in a recent poll, forty seven to forty six to former President Trump, uh, and this one is ahead, and it cited strong support from women and those with college degrees, and we saw the backlash from women voting in states that uh, were traditionally fairly conservative after the Roe v. Wade overturn, and I'm wondering if you're as a lobbyist for West Virginia Free seeing any similar type of backlash among women in West Virginia? Uh, yes, uh, and I have been seeing it for over a year. Uh, I, I don't know whether you noticed that um, uh, a couple of days ago, uh, the uh, Democrats in the House of Delegates introduced a proposed constitutional amendment which would have another referendum uh, on the question of uh, does the state constitution guarantee, guarantee uh, the right to abortion or not? 
Uh, and and the, the reason they're doing this, it's pretty clear, all the polls are showing uh, that uh, every place in the country, the ground has shifted uh, about 10% since since uh, the Dobbs decision overturning Roe versus Wade, it shifted about 10% in the direction of the pro-choice side. Uh, I read a column by Megan McArdle about uh, maybe two, three weeks ago in which she had said, and she's a conservative columnist in the Washington Post, and I, I think she's sharp as a tack. Uh, anyway, M- McArdle said that after Dobbs, she was convinced that it would help the pro-life side. And she and her column was, here's why I was wrong. And one of the things that she said was it would be political malpractice for Democrats in any state that they could get a referendum on a ballot to not get that referendum on the ballot. Uh, And now this is not going to pass. Certainly the Republicans are not going to let it on there. But it's certainly a way of calling attention to uh, the uh, the disconnect and 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 the change in in landscape. In fact, I think, see, uh, one of those, uh, uh, I think, such an amendment is now on the ballot in Florida, and I personally think that now makes Florida uh, playable in the presidential race, whereas it would not have been before. Mr. Gilstrap, or Mr. Ferretti, I'll, I'll go. Um, what we need to do, I think, when it, when it comes down to the various abortion legislation that's coming coming around, rather than concentrate on the women's right to choose, let's concentrate on the definition of infanticide. And if we can codify at what age it's okay to kill a child, or at what age a child is in fact a viable child, then everything else, every everything else will flow from that. But in the meantime, one of the things that always I, I have a hard time discussing this issue is because the child kind of gets lost in the mix, because that's really what we're talking about here. It's, well, it's, I, I disagree with you on that, John Gilstrap. Uh, what that ignores is what if you have a situation where to save the child, you have to kill the mother? Uh, well, uh, uh, worthy of, of a debate, worthy of discussion. Okay, so you know it's not. I don't. I don't think this is. This is not an. This is not a sledgehammer issue. This is a scalpel issue. Pardon that bad choice of words, I suppose. But um, I, I think this debate becomes such a often reduces to a shouting match because people aren't talking to each other. They're talking past each other. On the one hand, people are talking about the right of children to live. The other one is talking about the right of women to their own bodies. Both of those are legitimate arguments. But until we start having rational discussions that that acknowledge that there's another human life that's involved here, we're never going to have a, a peaceful solution. Well, the the sad thing is that We are not at a time in our country right now where we can have such a discussion. Uh, By the way, uh, questions don't have to be limited to Western Virginia free or or, uh, abortion or whatever. You can go anywhere you want. (laughs) Moving right along. With John. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Just so you know. But if you want to stay there, you can. John can talk about anything. So actually what I do want to do, I just kind of threw that out because it was – I was surprised that it was my turn. And let's talk about the pro-consumer, the, the Citizens Action Group. What are some of the issues that are, are driving that? What's in, what's in play? Quit selling my information on the web is what I want. <laughs> well, uh, and, it's, and pro-consumer is actually is defined actually pretty broadly. It's more than that. It's also pro-voting rights. Uh, and there are a number of bills that uh, are, are uh, floating around the Capitol now that, that in, in uh, our view, CAG's view, would, would restrict voting rights too much. Uh, an, another one, for example, uh, and we're concerned also about, um, uh, as, uh, uh, about environmental uh, rules uh, in general yesterday, or, or I think it was it was either yesterday or the day before. These days run together down here. Uh, there was a bill in front of the House Energy. It was the day before the House Energy Committee, which would have outlawed uh, citizen monitoring of air pollution. Uh, and uh, it, the um, 
right now, uh, the, the Department of Environmental Protection uh, only has something, I think it's 13 air monitoring sites around the state. So you might want, they actually have two in Berkeley County, uh, but then you don't get another one until you get, I think, almost to Randolph County. Uh, and so there are vast areas of the state that don't have air monitoring. So if you have a plant that citizens are concerned about, you can get these little purple boxes that monitor the air, and citizens do that. And if they see a problem, they contact the DEP and say, hey, there's a problem here. Can you come check it out? Uh, and uh, to the extent that the DEP has staff, they do do that, but that's part of the problem is that, uh, DEP is really short of staff, uh, and they don't always get there. You know, it might be another couple of weeks before they get there, and so by then the the, the, the problem is gone. It was maybe a temporary problem. Uh, but it's important that people know if there's a problem, even if it's temporary. So anyway, this would prohibit the use of these monitors. Uh, and, um, you know, while I think uh, it, it, it's n- not it's not the worst thing in the world to pass it. I think it's 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 I think it's kind of dumb uh, not to let people uh, citizens because many of these citizens are quite well trained uh, in in how to do, how to use this stuff. So it's important to, for for people to know if the air is bad. Anyway, that's an example, Mr. Ferretti. Well, while you're on that example, John, uh, is there any lobbying going on to make sure that the Department of Environmental Protection in West Virginia is fully staffed so that we can actually have uh, whatever laws are on the books today, we can have those laws and regulations enforced because we have sufficient manpower and sufficient resources to do so? Well, uh, there is some, and and, and uh, 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 Citizens Action Group is lobbying for that, and that, of course, would solve the problem. If they were staffed enough, if we had, instead of 13 of these air monitoring stations around the state, let's say we had 40 or 50, that would come very close to solving the problem. Uh, But uh, there is tremendous opposition, primarily from the manufacturing industry, about that, uh, uh, over that question. Well, you you brought this subject up, so I'm going to go there. Uh, The the issue with the voting rights uh, legislation that is being proposed, uh, give us some specifics on on what you see uh, is being discussed in the legislature and what you feel is problematic in terms of voting rights. Well, it's just generally taking the approach, we have to make sure that anybody who votes is eligible. So if there's any question... Let's not let them vote. I, I personally come, come at it from exactly the opposite point of view because I think we already have procedures in place that if someone casts a ballot that, and there's any question, they can cast a provisional ballot, and then we determine you know, af- after it's over, whether, w- w- within a few days after the election, whether or not that ballot can count. Um, one is uh, a proposal to uh, increase the the rigor of of our voter identification law uh there are a whole lot of people uh, i i don't mind doing that if the state would provide at the state's expense a photo id for everybody but the state's not going to do that uh and there are people who don't drive and really don't have uh, uh any any photo id but they're legitimate voters, so I think we should let them vote. Is I saw some legislation too that they're increasing penalties if if you're caught voting twice and things like that. Stuff that we're not going to really debate here. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I, uh, I understand uh, that. But uh, are there? Yeah, I, I remember an incident about 20 years ago in Jefferson County uh, oh, when I, a county I, commissioner <laughs> yes. uh, had voted early. Yes, and then showed up at the polling place. Yeah, and they caught him. It was it, it's easy to catch. And he shows up, and and he came up with the excuse he was just checking the system. The plain <laughs> truth is he forgot he voted early, and he should have just said, whoops, I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, but, uh, yeah. yeah, that's the only time I've ever seen that happen uh, in, in Jefferson County anyway. 
Yeah, but I don't think anybody's going to argue that there should be penalties uh, if you if you vote more than once. Uh, so oh, there should be penalties, yeah. certainly. Yeah, and there are some now. Are, are there other provisions or, or other proposals? There are not criminal say- penalties. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, yeah, a, a criminal yeah. penalty if it's if it's a misdemeanor and 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 it's a fine and you don't go to jail. You know that uh, I, I, that wouldn't cause me too much heartburn. I, I saw that there might be some efforts to tighten up. Uh, whether or not you can get an early ballot, uh, or, or you can you know, the excuses that you have to provide in order to to vote early if you're going to be out of the area or whatever on election day. Uh, have you watched any legislation in that regard? Yeah, and that's probably going to pass. We're probably going to tighten the rules about uh, how you get an absentee ballot. Again, I disagree with that. I think just about anybody who thinks they might not be around on election day should be able to get a, a, a ballot and, and vote early, vote by mail. My, what I would like to see, uh, it, it, and this is interesting, I've noticed in Jefferson County, and this is true among um, Democrats, Republicans, independents, everybody, not a whole lot of people take advantage of voting by mail, but many of them want to vote early. And Jefferson County only has one early voting location. Uh, I have actually, and in, in when I announced my campaign for the Senate, you know, a couple months ago, I said that I would like to see state law that any county with 50,000 people or more has to have three, at least three early voca- uh, voting locations. And any county with 35,000 or more has to have at least two. Uh, I, I think it, we should really make it easy, easier than it is for people to vote early. John, anytime uh, I read about proposed legislation, uh, my first instinct is to figure out, are we try- is there a problem to solve here first before we start legislating? Um, right. And, and, and so sometimes I, I wonder <laughs> if that's the case. But in, in this particular situation, I, I've heard Mac Warner on this show many times indicate that the elections in West Virginia have been very fair. They've been well run. And we really were, were beyond reproach regarding our election system in the state. So are you seeing in your lobbying efforts on, on behalf of your group, are you seeing any evidence being presented that we still have some problems in our state election systems that, that require no. further legislation? No. Uh, the argument in favor of, of, of tighter restrictions is there might be a problem in the future. Okay. And, and that, that's the kind of situation that concerns me a little. Yeah. John, John Doyle is our guest. He's in the Capitol lobbying on behalf of three different organizations. He's also, as he mentioned a moment ago, a candidate for state Senate. And, John, yesterday, uh, Senate passed 33 nothing without debate, SB 474, which creates a critical incident review team for the new Department of Human Services to review cases that result the death or near death of a child in state custody or a child who is a member of a family known by DHS or with a DHS History. The review team would include representatives from DHS, the foster care ombudsman, and a representative of the Supreme Court Division of Children's Services. Tell me, as a member of the state Senate, John, what are some of the first things that you would do to help fix this foster care child uh, child situation in West Virginia? Uh, We have to increase the appropriation for the Department of Human Services so that they have enough uh, uh, child protective service workers that, doing the job. Uh, we don't have enough of them. Their caseload is too too big, and it's just there's too many people falling through the cracks for that reason. Incidentally, I do think it was a very wise decision on the part of the legislature to break up the old Department of Health and Human Resources uh, in, in, in into three departments. I had for about Oh Lord! Fifteen years advocated breaking it into into two departments, uh, I, and I understand uh, breaking the third one off the, the Department of Health Facilities. So I do think that this organization is a is a much better organization than the one we had before, but it's not going to work unless we're willing to hire a sufficient number of child protective service workers. Mr. Gilstrap, I want to go back to voting for a second. Oh, do we see, or you're, I know you're kind of an Eastern Panhandle guy, but writ large, kind of, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> writ large throughout the state, do we see when it comes to voting locations and what have you? There's there's the the 
panhandles, and then there's the belly of, of West Virginia. You go into coal country and, and, and such. I'm going to guess it's a lot harder to get to a polling place down there than it is up here. Are Is your organization concerned with with easing that burden as well? Well, actually, you know, that thing about more voting locations, that's um, um, Citizens Action Group would support that. But that's not one of the things they hired me to lobby on. That's just something I believe in. Uh, And I really responded to that as a candidate for the state Senate, uh, not as the lobbyist for West Virginia Citizens Action Group. But uh, I would disagree with you. There is this big belly of the state. There are tremendous differences uh, between uh, Morgantown, uh, Charleston, Bluefield, Logan, uh, and, and and it just uh, in, in Charleston is pretty uh, pretty easy to find a voting location, uh, and the same is true in Morgantown. Uh, in fact, as my understanding, actually in Morgantown, people tend more to want to vote by mail. So again, you you have this different different regions regions of the state tend to have different collective attitudes about how to go about voting. Uh, so uh, I, I there are uh, I I wouldn't put it as one big you know uh, it, it, it's not all the same from from Morgantown to Bluefield. Well, it, maybe I misstated. I, that's that's not what I meant to apply. It's just as you um, when you get into the truly mountainous, the vertical parts of of this state. I'm going to guess, and it's not an area that I visit very often, to be honest. Um, I'm just going to guess that it's it's harder to get to places. I know that it's harder to get kids to school there because of transportation issues. So I I didn't. Well, uh, that is generally true. Although, remember when you when you get to uh, west of I-79, the, the state's really not all that hilly. You know, play Parkersburg's pretty flat. Mason County's pretty flat. Uh, all up and down the Ohio River, where a lot of people live. Uh, there's some relatively flat land. John Doyle, our guest here on the program. Uh, John, uh, from your perspective, what are the things that you're watching coming out of the uh, the House and the Senate legislation-wise that we haven't talked about that you feel need attention? Well, I'm going to Senate Judiciary this afternoon. There's a bill up that I'm very much in favor of, and this is on behalf of West Virginia Free, and I'm in, in favor of it too. It would eliminate the marital exception for spousal abuse. What does that mean? Yeah, you're, yeah, explain that, please. You can't beat your... Well, right now you can legally beat your spouse. Oh, I see. Yeah. If this passes, you won't be able to. I think it's a very important reform and long overdue. How old is that law? Oh, uh, centuries. So are, are, is it... Is it practical that uh, this violence is happening and people are not being charged for it because it's legal uh, under I, the law? I, yeah, there is some evidence that, you know, there are uh, there are laws that people can use right now. But this this gets in the way of 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 a, of a spouse who has been abused, proving the case in court. Katie Delaghetti, the uh, prosecuting attorney in Berkeley County, just sent me a text that said sexual abuse. Uh, is, is that the main driver of this law as opposed to uh, physical violence that is not sexual uh, abuse? I, yes, yes. Jim, I'm sorry, I, I should have used that term. I apologize. I did not. All yeah. right. I guess that would My put, mistake. put that in a different context then. Joe? Yeah, yeah. Thank, uh, thanks to Katie for that clarification. Uh, yeah, I, I, can, I can see, John, that being... Uh, something that uh, hoping is going to be uh, unanimous uh, in passing you don't you don't expect opposition do you uh i don't think it'll be unanimous but i do hope it passes uh, well I, when you get a chance I'd fill us in on what the arguments are in favor of the status quo oh i'm going to be paying very close attention today in the committee so i'll i'll make some notes for next week okay john final word is yours here Hey, this is fun. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. That was more than one word, John. I was just looking for one word there. No. Uh, hey, appreciate oh. it. We're going to be visiting with you every Thursday during the legislative session, so long as your schedule aligns with ours. Yes, and is it next week or the week after we're changing the time? Uh, I will text you that answer rather than look it up while we're on the air. <laughs> okay. How's that sound? <laughs> 
Hey, thanks, everybody. Thank thanks, you, John. John. Take care.